It's Newborn Screening Awareness Month, and today we've got the story of a little boy who is benefiting from early diagnosis. Joining us now are Dr. Sandra Reyna. She is Vice President of Global Medical Affairs at Novartis Gene Therapies, along with parents Jim and Hannah Weaver. Doctor, I wanna start with you. Can you tell us a little bit about what is SMA? Yes, um, so spinal muscular atrophy, or SMA, is a rare and devastating genetic disease and is caused by the lack of a functional survivor motor neuron one or the SMN1 gene. When left untreated, it leads to progressive muscle weakness, paralysis, and in most severe forms, permanent ven ventilation or death in 90% of children by the age of two. The early signs of SMA can be subtle, uh, with sometimes you know, appearing uh, healthy babies, even as motor neuron loss occurs. Many primary care physicians and pediatricians don't recognize early signs of SMA, which can lead to delays in diagnosis and treatment. Though SMA is rare, one in 54 people are a carrier of the disease, and it affects approximately one in 10,000 live births worldwide. Um, you know, as of July 2022, 47 states are screening for SMA at birth, which is a tremendous progress. It is nonetheless important to understand the signs of SMA in newborns and be aware of available treatment options. Uh, so for parents in states that do not screen at birth, it's important to watch for early signs like uh, you know, low muscle tone, difficulty breathing, or feeding. Hannah, can you describe your family's journey with your son Payne's SMA diagnosis? Sure. So from diagnosis through treatment, uh, was about six weeks, or it, it was right at six weeks. We received his diagnosis at six days. It was a call on a Saturday morning from his pediatrician's office notifying us of an abnormality on his newborn screening. Um, and they just said that there was something wrong with his muscles and it was a genetic disorder and that it was called SMA. So the next week we went and met with four doctors that are make up his team and we really bore down and and set a plan to get um, approval for Zolgensma. That was what we wanted. Um, that was the only option um, that we thought was was something that we would want to do for pain as far as treatment goes. And at four weeks, we had approval. And at six weeks, we had uh, Zolgensma. So after that, we were we were finally able to breathe and everything's been smooth sailing ever since. So doctor, tell us more about this new treatment option. Right, so Sonjelsma, also the generic name of it is uh, Omnacinogene Abipabrevec, is a gene therapy approved by the FDA for the treatment of pediatric patients less than two years of age uh, with SMA. This is a one-time gene therapy and is designed to address the genetic root cause of SMA and it halts disease progression. Uh, um, you know, Sonjelsma targets uh, the root cause of SMA by replacing the function of the missing or non-working SMN1 gene uh, with a new working copy of the SMN gene. Now, children treated with uh, Sonjosma also need a baseline labs and they need to return for blood tests weekly, bi-weekly, and then monthly for at least the first three months uh, after the treatment. And why is it so important to treat SMA when children are so young? Absolutely, you know, diagnosing and treating SMA quickly is crucial to stopping disease progression, uh, which robs patients of valuable motor neurons that allow them to sit, walk, eat, and breathe. Uh, the detection of SMA uh, through newborn screening helps, uh, you know, helps and allows for timely access to treatment and effective care, resulting in improved clinical outcomes. Uh, children who are treated pre-symptomatically have achieved motor milestones that might not have been possible at all without intervention. Um, every patient's journey with SMA is different, and results and outcomes vary among children based on several factors, including how far their SMA symptoms had progressed prior to receiving treatment. For us, um, early diagnosis was key to the long-term success for pain. With the unpredictability of onset for SMA, there's really no set timetable as to how much time you have to work with. Therefore, once you get diagnosis, we found it very crucial to leave no stone unturned 
to treat as soon as possible. Whenever we looked at the options, there were only two FDA approved options at the time of our diagnosis. Um, the reason we went with the gene therapy, it had the lowest impact on our child. And it seemed at the time that it had the longest lasting effects as the alternative option was a succession of treatments that throughout the year, um, the gene therapy was a one-time treatment and that, that really spoke to us and that's why we went that route. Doctor, what else do we need to know about SMA? Right, so about one in 50 people are genetic carriers of SMA. So before pregnancy, parents can get tested to see if they are carriers uh, for the disease. When both parents are carriers of SMA, their baby has a 25% chance of having SMA. And this will happen at every pregnancy. To learn more about SMA and care to, uh, screening, you can visit um, a patient advocate group website, which is named uh, curesma.org. And Hannah and Jim, how is Payne doing now? <laughs> he is doing great. Um, Payne had his two-year postal genesma follow-up this week, and he is hitting and exceeding physical and mental milestones um, of an unaffected child. And the tests they were doing on him were for three-year-olds. So he is definitely advanced uh, for his age, which we are thrilled about. And that's something that certainly wouldn't be able to say if it wasn't for his one-time gene therapy. We're so happy to hear that. Where can we go for more information? Um, CureSMA.org is where you can find information on SMA and um, treatment options. And then Zolgensma.com as well. Uh, you can learn a lot about Zolgensma. All right. I want to thank you three for being with us. Really appreciate you being here and our best to pain as well. And we'll be right back with more Midday Maryland right after this. Stay tuned.